Medicine, can I see your tree? <gasps> we have our tree up already. Uh, yeah, obviously she has a tree up. Ooh. There it is. Cute. She already has some presents. <laughs> Not only is the tree up, but I mean, no Christmas tree is complete without having presents under it. So are we've already real? gone ahead and. Or are they Yeah. Present? Oh, I'm almost done. <laughs> yeah, she's such an overachiever. <laughs> Obviously. So, Nick, do you have presents under the tree that you're like. That are mine there? Uh, yeah. Mine? I don't no. think mine are under They're like your family's, but none of yours. Oh, not yet. Not yeah. yet. Mine's too big to fit under a tree. It's a car. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, man. I didn't know you were rolling in it. In love, in love with movies. In love, in, 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 in love. So that was one of the like new things that we were talking never, about. <laughs> Nick's never had the power to just cut someone off before. <laughs> I was like, uh. I was just like waiting for that moment that I thought would be like, this is probably where I will end up editing this and putting this in, or like this is normally how I would do the processes afterwards, edit it. And I was like, I'll just do it right there. Just boom, we'll have it happen. <laughs> and wow. so with that. Hello, movie lovers, and welcome to In Love with Movies. I'm Nick. I'm Danny. Am I quiet? No, you're you're fine oh. until you get really, really close All to the right. mic, and then it's a little bit of a problem, actually. Do you want to introduce our guests? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would like them to introduce themselves. Oh, Who okay, are fair, you, fair. humans on the other side of the screen? Mm, I'm Madison. And I'm Nick. Whoa. Well, we've never had two Nicks on at one time. This is oh going to be God. very confusing. And they did it, like, almost with the same cadence that we did. Already bosom buddies. Bosom buddies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Madison's like, I don't like that Ooh. term. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are just listening and not visually seeing, okay, I want to explain some things. First, my Nick, the one that is in charge of this podcast, and That's you're fine. in, yeah, the, one the loud one. The one that really annoys people. Yeah. He's N-I-C. So think of it as Neek. And then what other Nick? I have literally never been up with Nick. <laughs> That's how I think of you in my head. And then other that Nick. That is news to me. Seven <laughs> years of our relationship, three years of marriage, and I my mind is blown. I'm sorry. Continue talking about our lovely guest Nick. It's like <laughs> the pen brand. Beak. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's Bick. I, I was going to oh, say. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you pronounce it Bick. <laughs> Funny enough, how that just perfectly articulates the case that you should not be thinking of my okay, name as Neek. It is Nick. And then on the other side, we have Nick. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly how I pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick uh, with a K. And then, wait, wow. wait, wait, stop. Then we have Madison. So, or Madison. As Siri, as Siri says, it's medicine. No! Yes! <laughs> Siri calls you medicine? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, should we, you, you said you were going to let them introduce themselves, and then you just kept I, talking. They you pulled the bald one. Themselves, we introduce ourselves? I'm spelling them. <laughs> so Madison has two S's in, instead of two D's. Do, does anyone have two D's for Madison? People do have two D's. And, you know, I get a lot of emails where people are like, they go completely rogue and M-A-D-D-I-S-S-O-N. I'm like, my parents were a little bit, like, creative, but they 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 were sane. <laughs> do you know why this is deep deep questioning do you know why they chose two s's yeah mm -hmm. um because so fun fact the 1984 movie splash came out <laughs> and um madison was not a name for girls at all before this movie came out uh even in the movie this is a little movie trivia for you mm -hmm. even in the movie <laughs> general hannah's character uh was trying to figure out a name for herself she's a mermaid and tom hanks was like rattling off names and he goes oh madison avenue she's madison i love that name and he's like that's not a name and she was like uh it is now it's my name anyway my mom obsessed with tom hanks and she <laughs> swears good man to be <laughs> obsessed was, with <laughs> yeah. yeah she swears it was not because of the movie but I know it was because the movie has named Madison, but Madison was more of a boy's name than a girl's name. So she's like, Jessica is spelled with two S's. That's a girl's name. 
She's like, so Madison with two S's is a girl's name. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a From story. But, Madison, okay. you were not conceived in 1984. No, but my mom was like 16 in 1984, which is prime time for a girl. To <laughs> yeah, that's when everyone so comes up with their children's kids. names. 16. That's, yeah. Oh, uh -huh. if that's the case, well, um, one of my kids will be named probably Sparkle. And then, Sparkle? I don't know. Why don't you tell our <laughs> listeners why Madison and Nick are joining us today? How do we know Madison and Nick? Oh, I was like, why are they joining us? Because I was like, guys, will you be on the podcast? And they're like, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Madison and I have known each other for, I literally don't know how many years now, like four, three or four? Three, I think. Time is different now. <laughs> um, Madison and I were on the same Mint team, musical improv night team, that came into to be Monster Mixtape, which is our indie improv team that we still, Monster. we're still together, we're still performing. And stuff. Um, also, I just like Madison. She's very sweet. And then Madison added a new human into the mix recently, aka Nick. Um, and you say it like that every time, Nick. Yeah. Fun fact: Nick and I. Did you know this? Nick and I went to high school together. It's a did small, you know small world. You mean that Nick? You see, you mispronounced it, and so I didn't Sorry. know that you were talking about him. I thought you were telling them that we went to high school together, and hot I was school. totally was confused. I, went I was to completely school. confused. No, Nick and I went to high school together. Nick, I think you're one year older than me, so you stayed uh, at East. Or two. Yeah, I graduated in 08. Oh, yeah, you old. I'm so wow. old. Why did I say that publicly? <laughs> it's okay, you're younger than Nick. I was going to say. <laughs> you're younger than me. Um, but we were we when we thought about it, I think we were in the same jazz band at the same time at one point, right? At some point, yeah. All the what band, did you play? the music did you play things. Saxophone? I, yeah, I played the sax. And me too. Mm -hmm. And you were in jazz band, so actually you improvised with Nick. Oh my before goodness. you okay. improvise. First of all, Nick just added Madison. an H. You just added an H to Nick. <laughs> Nick. Um, yeah, and we went to, I swear, I probably have like pictures of us in the same Whoa. room. Like, didn't we go to New Trier Jazz Fest? And remember, it was like Hogwarts. Am I making this up? He doesn't. Yeah, oh, fun fact. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, this might be embarrassing. <gasps> That's the best kind of story. Please share. He's never seen or read any Harry Potter. <gasps> okay, well, Madison, wait, you wait. understand what Hogwarts is, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. no, 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 no. Here's the other thing. Madison was our primary form of contact for this movie. Therefore, she could have just picked a Harry Potter movie. And no. for the first time, if no, you're no, that no. much of a Harry Potter fan, Madison, you could have made Nick. I'm not that much of a Harry oh, Potter fan. Me enough, neither. Right. I was fine. I was fine. <laughs> what do you mean you're not a fan? You've watched all the movies. Right. <laughs> 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 that you are correct. And anybody get the Parks and Rec reference? Okay. Yeah, we, anyway. We, we got it. Good. Awesome. Uh oh. Virtual five. That's See, I love that you all got it. She didn't. She didn't. <laughs> and then, question, since I clearly was the connection for you two, you're both like, you know Danny Smith? I know Danny Smith. Actually, in high school, I was Danielle. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> uh, but Madison and Nick, how do you two know each other? I was just about to say, why don't we stop talking about you and let them talk to us about <laughs> themselves? Damn. So. Called out. How did you actually come to know each other, love each other? You know, you got about five minutes. Give us your whole love story. Five Only five minutes. minutes. That was <laughs> the first week. Uh, yeah. So uh, we met how most do now on dating app. And um farmers only. <laughs> Good choice. It was a bold move, like for somebody who lives in, you know, inner city Chicago to be on farmers only, but you gotta follow your heart. So <laughs> um yeah. We, I mean, that's the whole story. The point, you told me it was gonna take you were so aghast that I asked for five minutes and then that's the story. We met on farmers only. Done. I don't think they met. Um, you know, we met, we like chatted, we liked each other, and then we went for sushi. Yeah. Sushi. Yeah. When did you meet? First date was May 7th. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew the stuff 
good. He he may or may not have written that down somewhere. Oh yeah. Like so that's May seventh though of this year. Is that yeah. correct? Oh mm-hmm. good. So we're still in the young puppy love. Yeah. So oh, we. Yeah. You, so you still like each other. <laughs> Seven years will change that. <laughs> Oh my god, you know shade that is being <laughs> You're being roasted. I I'm sorry, know. you were about to say something before I was about clearing up the date. <laughs> um so I think <laughs> sorry, I lost my train of thought. I think that you both are our youngest couple. Ooh. You know, you've had the less least amount of time of being together and also yeah. being on our podcast. So this is new territory. I'm nervous. <laughs> wow. I don't want to call you out for anything that you haven't yes. gotten to yet. Like, ha- yeah, have- you knew. You, I mean, you knew I had time. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, cool. Oh, cool, so cool. the word's been used. All right, so we can still call it a love story then. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. All right. So there's more to this love story than sushi. I mean, you guys didn't go out on a single date and then months later come on this podcast. No, so that's how it went. Give us, give us a little bit more. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, I don't know, how do I put words to it? I don't know Let's she... see, there was a mall date, a <laughs> picnic at the beach. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, it was nice that we met around, like, when it was getting warm, warm outside, outside mm-hmm. yeah, okay. because, yeah. Oh, Summer. we went on a Costco date. <laughs> Costco date? <laughs> I was yeah, about I to ask. To Costco. I had never been to Costco, and I, had to show where I, it I wanted to go. And he was like, "I got a Costco membership." It's like, "Let's go!" That's and very exciting, honestly. That same day was the day I was like, "Let's also go to Goodwill," and we um, picked out outfits for each other. And then um, on a day after that, we like went to a small town in Indiana wearing these crazy costumes. Yes. <laughs> Um, just like spent the whole day there like it was normal. Mm-hmm. Aww. Yeah. Sadly, we didn't stand out as much as you would have hoped, but you know, <laughs> that's what happens that's, there. Yeah, we were in the country, so we weren't the weirdest thing that they yeah. would see that day. <laughs> we picked the most like outdated, strange looking clothing that we could find, and then we went to a random small town in Indiana and realized that's just what everyone wears. Yeah. Yep. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So, Nick, you share Madison's wacky love for wackiness. Wacky love for wackiness. For, for being silly. Wow. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's always making me laugh. I would say he yes ands me a lot. Ooh. Now, Nick, do you have, aside from your jazz training, uh, do you have any improv training? I don't. I can never be on stage, but. You don't aspire like- to try? No, I like participating mentally, though, you know, at the shows. The, two, <laughs> the whole two that I've been to, I, you know, I think about what I would do. <laughs> you know, Nick, if Mint ever comes back. Oh, even this worse Nick, than me just being on stage would be me singing. Like, come on. No, 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 no. Do they make you, they don't make you sing, they don't make you sing in the audience participation, do you? Oh, okay. In a, you, I don't know. Oh, I you mean remember. the jam? Yeah. Sometimes they do. I was yeah. going to say, I definitely remember singing. Nick has been on stage a couple of times singing. just because you put your name in a box and they just call names, and that's what happens. I honestly, like, at this point, had completely blanked on that. Like, I apparently blacked that out in my memory. You I were barely on stage, it like, all. four times. You are bringing back all of this trauma to me. It is just, like, so terrifying to be thinking about those times again. Um, and, Nick, you, I don't know if you're going to – you'll probably be this kind of boyfriend – this Nick, we've known each other for seven over seven years now. He's probably been to seven hundred <laughs> improv <laughs> shows. He's been to almost every single improv show I've ever had, which is truly a lot. And you know, not all of those are good. <laughs> They've all been Some are better than so others. Far. Two out of two have been really good. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good answer. He's Good answer, wall on mic. Your time when you know, like stages are only kind of open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Most of the ones that I've been to were either well before the world shut down, uh, or the, the virtual ones, which I admittedly. I am impressed by what you all do virtually, but I do not personally enjoy it as much. For me, the theater going experience is like 
any other movie theater going experience. I, I went to go see a movie today at a theater because to me, that's like, that's part of it is, you know, me and the guy in two seats over, or, you know, laughing at the same portions. And afterwards mm -hmm. he's asking me questions about like, you know, if I know that there's one or two post credit scenes, like that's, that's the movie that going sense. experience to me. And without that, it's like, da, 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 da. Sid, I'm going to ask you this. Okay. How did you know? Okay. Cause I, I know a little bit about you, Madison. Uh -oh. Oh, she's getting nervous. <laughs> I know that you you had a, a few many dates, and you know you would go on a, a few many. That's that's a good number right she there. Met a few a, many. A couple of people, and you told there was lots of wacky stories. Um, but why is wacky the word that I'm using? I don't know. Um, that you know none of them really stuck. Even though one guy truly wrote you a full ass song, <laughs> it still you wasn't. Should, I should send it to you, and you can play it. Yes. Yes. We're gonna, we'll put oh it in. my God! Please do. <laughs> yes. If you have someone that wrote a song for you. Our listeners I was want yeah, to hear this. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a bop for sure. That but, was about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> so Madison, how did you know that Nick was gonna stick? Oh, look at Keep that! That even rhymes. And it stick and Nick have CK. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So I like. I don't know. I tell everybody this. Like, Nick's like the best person I ever met in my whole life. She does like, tell me that. I can confirm. I can confirm. Um, yeah. And, well, on paper, like, we share the same beliefs and, like, have similar goals. And um, we, yeah, he really cares about other people and his goals with his family. So, like, all the papers on paper stuff is good. Um, and also, like, He's really fun to be around and makes me feel safe and like loved and valued as a person. Um, so yeah, treats other people well. <laughs> just the all around good human. Yeah, just the all around good human. And like, yeah, we had like, we really, I don't know. When we talk, I feel like, like we, I, he hears me, you know, and like, does it make me feel like I'm, crazy or weird or <laughs> waggy, <laughs> um, <laughs> even though I am, and like supports me in uh, all the things that I do. And like, I don't know, oh, <laughs> just so all cute. those things together. This is too adorable. So cute. This is too adorable. All right, Nick, same question. Oh boy. Why did Madison stick? I don't know what happened pre-Madison. I wasn't privy to that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, tell us I am all of your dating history. I'm really before. disappointed <laughs> that I just I didn't have the same adventure that Madison did. I just I wish I had so many great stories. Yeah. No one wrote you a song? Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Madison hasn't even written me one yet and she <gasps> loves writing songs. Oh called out. <laughs> I didn't say called out. Oh no. <laughs> what you Nicks are roasting today. <laughs> Madison, I think you know exactly what you should be getting at least as one of Nick's Christmas presents now. That's like oh, so all easy. All of my songs are like cynical. I couldn't do that to you. <laughs> 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 Nick, I still ask you that question. Yes. Let me Why rephrase Madison? it. Let me rephrase it. Let me give you a little bit of a oh, no. recontext because it's she answered it kind of like one of the ways I was going to ask my second question. Oh, okay. So, Nick. Uh oh. Mm hmm. What do you feel is the secret to you and Madison's happy and healthy relationship? Mm. Big question. Those so are very things. hefty. I know. I feel. Let me put on my therapist hat. There sorry. you go. <laughs> um, I think that's a Arrested Development reference. Um, <laughs> and no, I think one. There's a few things. We're very open and able to discuss things with each other really easily and our communication is really good um i think we have a lot of grace for each other and a lot of understanding of different um not struggles but personality quirks that we each have and sure there's some overlap there so i think <laughs> We have a great understanding of those things, and um, we really make each other laugh. Mostly Madison making me laugh, but you know, I throw in the occasional joke here and there, and um, yeah, everything has just been so great. Like, 
but yeah, I was gonna it say. really comes down to like trust and communication and um, yeah. That's great. Also, huge plus that you think Madison is funny. Honestly, I only married Nick because he thought I was funny. <laughs> like not a lot of people besides myself think I'm funny, so. What? I thought about so many ways to roast you just there too, but I'm gonna. That's just a, such a sweet note that I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> what I was gonna say is, I do. To your credit, Nick, you're saying, "Oh, you know, Madison makes me laugh." But in this conversation we've had so far, she's been giggling up a storm and <laughs> apparently not made you laugh very much at all. So. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Not a vocal laugher. Not everyone is. You guys know those people that like just say, that's so funny. Uh, yeah. The worst. Da, da, da. Look at my cat. <laughs> so we, while Danielle uh, plays with a cat, I feel like now might be a good time for us to move into our next segment, the last segment we have before we start talking about the movie. Danielle, what segment is that? Or should I ask Banks? I think you're talking about... Uh... Closer Through Science. There it is. Right. She remembers the name. Closer Through Science. And Nick, what is hashtag Closer Through Science? Oh my goodness, she's even getting better at the, the kicking it back over my way. I love this. I love this. So Closer Through Science is a bit that we do where if you thought our earlier questions were deep, well, we're going to go even deeper. This <laughs> is all based upon a study from some years ago, Aaron et al. 1997, uh, where they discovered that they could make complete strangers feel more uh, connected and close to each other by having them go through a series of questions and through the course of the conversation that happens from that, and then they end up having higher ratings of the person. So through that, we're going to use some of those same questions with you all, and we are therefore going to uh, ask you some of those questions, and you can answer them for us, and our listeners can then share their uh, information with us on our social media pages and share their stories or answers to this question so that we can all get closer through science together. Oh, oh, we are. Okay, so we're getting down on this list because we're in season three now of the That's podcast. Right. That's right. So we're getting close to the, the deep. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the deep questions. Gotta get down low. What? Totally blowing out mics right now. Okay. Somebody yeah. somebody got really upset. Yeah, we're on like question 28 out of 36. So, yes. I mean, this Whoa! is, oh, we're so gradually, you know, it was supposed to get like yeah, yeah, closer yeah. and closer and closer, but now <laughs> yeah. we're just like, we're going to leap right in there. <laughs> What's that? No, nothing. Well, right, oh, okay. Let's start back at one. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? All right. So, tell your partner what you like about them be very honest this time saying things that you may not have said to someone you just met what i just did no. this <laughs> she did just we'll do, do it this. the other way then tell us something you like about us yeah <laughs> after this conversation <laughs> I'll just go ahead and make it self-serving. Why not? Let's should, do it. Should we say things we like about them? I like that idea. Why don't you go first? <laughs> Give you time to think about it. I love you all's candor. Love. Yeah. Yeah. I use the word love. We are all about love on this podcast. <laughs> I love you, Madison and Nick. That's not, I'm not even playing. I love you both. One of the things that I love about you is the candor and the sincerity and the willingness to approach new experiences like being on someone's podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I have to say I love this? I, you do what you gotta do. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to say it. You can just like us. <laughs> She's not ready to commit. She's not willing to leap in. No. I'm sorry, she doesn't like you as much as I do. It's clear. <laughs> Yeah, no, not at all. That's why I've stuck with Madison for the past three years. Um, what do I... I love your wackiness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, truly, both of you are some of the kindest people I've ever, ever, ever met. And so that is something I really like about you. Oh. It's hard for me to be sincere ever in real life. That's why I do comedy. I <laughs> well... I know you guys much better than Nick does, so it's not <laughs> for me to go first. No. <laughs> oh, 
don't know. I love that you guys are so supportive of each other. And yeah, like Nick said, like he's been to like all of Danny's shows, which is <laughs> amazing. There's some shows that I was in with Danny that I'm like, that Danny and I are both like, do we really have to be here right now? <laughs> 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 and so, yes, that's amazing. And yeah, Danny always, you know, it, even though she's the one on stage, she's always speaking so highly of you, Nick. Like, she loves you and she's still obsessed with you after seven years. And it's <laughs> and, um, oh, stop it. Yeah. And you guys are no, also both on. like uh, great people. You're good friends to have and you give to others through what you do at work and um, just you're kind and you care. Thank you. And you read the script I provided you very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Nick, you don't have to answer. You're an extension of Madison. I know you kind of are just meeting us, but if you want to answer, you totally can. No pressure, but you know, what are your first impressions? Uh, okay, I'll just say one thing I think is really cool and I love is. Um, <laughs> us next, cool. we're willing to commit to it. We love the love. Go ahead. I know. Um, this podcast you guys do, and um, you know, doing fun things like having guests on and exploring your love of movies and sharing it with everybody else. Thank you. And I love movies too. too. Oh, we're open. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. It's very generous, uh, especially given being put on the spot. I know. We're like, come on our podcast and say nice things about yeah, didn't know it was going to go that way. Uh, that was, uh, yes. listeners, a little bit on my part. I didn't give Danielle enough of a heads up, like, hey, this was the question. Yeah, I didn't on. know it was coming. And so she kind of, like, I just, as she asked the question, I was like, oh, dang it. Okay. That's rough. <laughs> well, hey, sometimes you got to improvise, right? Leave it to the mm -hmm. professionals, please. <laughs> is there a laugh track? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Speaking of love of movies, we might as well go ahead and move on. We we got so caught up in all of our newfangled things that we have going on with the, the recording uh, equipment and things like that. We totally forgot to, to start off by letting people know at the beginning of this episode what movie we're watching. So before we go to break, Madison and Nick, what movie did you all pick for us to watch? We chose The Holiday, that new Christmas classic. <laughs> Um, I is it a is it a Christmas movie? Yeah. Wait, Ooh. you have to say this. Christmas adjacent. <laughs> all right, all right. We're gonna go to break, and then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna add that part to the discussion. <laughs> is is Holiday a Christmas movie? Yeah. The next part. In love with movies. Da, da, da. The original. And we're back. Welcome back, movie lovers. Hope those uh, plugs didn't bother you too much. We are happy to be returning with Madison and Nick. So that we can discuss the movie. Oh, holi the holiday or holiday? I don't know. Is there a the? I think it is holiday. Holiday. Mm -hmm. They go on more than one, so it's not just the holiday. Right. <laughs> and Nick, get your little book out. Tell us your facts oh, okay, about this. Okay. So uh, this is the opening credits for <laughs> holiday. A couple of uh, you know little little uh, tidbits and things of information. You know, to give everyone a little bit of context before we launch into the movie. So. As Madison alluded to, the movie is quite new. It came out around the holiday season last year, 2020. So it's about a year old. It's starring uh, Emma Roberts. Who is the niece of Julia Roberts. I have that what? Note as well. Yep. Oh, you did not know that. I know it now. <laughs> you can see the family resemblance. You I can, feel like. yeah. I feel like you can see the family resemblance. Yeah. Her dad actually is, is a decent actor, decent, decently known actor, Eric Roberts, but he's not nearly as big as, as Julia Roberts. So I don't know, Eric. It's also starring uh, Luke Baracy is the name of our Aussie friend who she mm -hmm. finds. I had no idea who that person no. was. And then when I went Googling for it, uh, I discovered he was in the, he plays uh, Utah in the remake of Point Break. That means nothing to me. And, and Nick at least knows what that means, but he may not have seen it because pretty much nobody yeah, did. <laughs> my favorite character, my favorite actress in this, though. Kristen Chenoweth. Yes, Kristen <laughs> Chenoweth. Very good. What's her name? Loved her as the aunt. I have no idea what, what you're saying. Kristen, 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 Kristen Chenoweth. <laughs> I don't know how to enunciate. Correct. Okay. Kristen Chenoweth, who obviously was made famous 
I'm not looking at a book, by the way. I didn't have to look this stuff up. <laughs> Famous by her role as Galinda in Wicked. And then, you know, she was also on Glee. Wasn't she on, like, Nashville or something? People did not know she her was from the being remake on of Annie. Was she, uh... The, what's the, she what's was not. She was not. She was not Miss Hannigan. She oh. was a uh, rooster's girlfriend. What's her name? I don't know. All I know is she probably said rooster. Oh, <laughs> Nick, I know Christian Chenoweth from The West Wing. Did you ever watch The West Wing? West Wing, so I have great. Not seen that one? Oh. No, that's a classic. I know. I didn't yeah, see it either. either. This, Best president that's ever been put on screen. <laughs> Yeah, president Bartlett, best president. Sure. Nobody, nobody has any reaction to that. No. Anyway, the only the other thing I had was this is uh, written by a woman named Tiffany Paulson, which I thought was pretty interesting because one of her earliest credits was the Nancy Drew movie that was starring Emma, Emma Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. Uh -huh, mm. uh -huh. so came Do I smell her. nepotism somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get that from Emma Roberts being famous because Julia Roberts. Really <laughs> 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 um, all right. So before we get into our love stories and our larger discussion of this movie, now that we have the opening credits, we need a Danny's Dingle. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that's that's where we're at at this at this point. Okay. So. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, where Danielle is going to summarize this movie for our listeners. <laughs> Maybe. Click the button. Do it. You can do it. Time for Danny's Dingle. <laughs> Great. Okay. Christmas. Run down sweatpants and smoke. Sad because single. Brilliant idea. Australian man. Who I will be mean to in the return line. Because pajamas. Fall in like, but dislike. Will they? Won't they? Self-referential. Kristen Chenoweth is a sleut. <laughs> Next Christmas, I'm in love. The end. <laughs> I think that may have been both the longest Danny's Dingle with the most number of words and the most like beginning of a movie heavy. You basically were like, here's this huge setup, and then the movie ends and they're in love. Like, <laughs> also, not spoiler alerts or anything. I really enjoyed this movie, so I'm excited to talk about it. Me too, actually. I know it was on my list last year, uh, and we never got around to seeing it. But you kept being like, because eventually what happened, and this is where I was going to debate it, uh, after it got out of the holiday season, Danielle specifically said, we can't watch that. It's a Christmas movie, mm -hmm. and it's not Christmas season anymore. Mm -hmm. So then I had to wait until now, and then I was very excited when you all recommended it, and I even enjoyed the movie, I think, more than I anticipated. But that mm -hmm. summarizes my love uh, story with this movie, because I only watched it the first time for this podcast. Danielle, I feel like that's the same for you. Yeah, no, I saw the preview, and I was like, Last year I saw it when it came out because, you know, Netflix knows us and the algorithm and all that stuff. And I was like, this looks dumb. Next. And so then also, I know Madison's going to hurt when I say this. I just can't get into uh, Hallmark Christmas movies. And I think it's because I don't let myself. So I wasn't letting myself enjoy this one. And look what happened. Look mm -hmm. at it. Okay. Madison mm -hmm. and Nick, <laughs> what is your love movie with Love. Your love movie? Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna make fun of my so I'm gonna come at you. All right, yeah. All right. What is your love story? Um, I watched this movie for the first time last year, and I'm hurt that you thought you wouldn't like it, Danny, because I rated it very high on my movie reviews. <laughs> I know I do Mr. watch your movie reviews. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So each year I watch a whole bunch of cheesy Christmas movies, and I rate them on my Instagram stories just for people to generally know whether or not they should watch it or not watch it. And also it's very fun for me. I don't like enjoy Hallmark movies as to like, you know, because they're quality and it's movies. I like them because um, they like, you always know that you're gonna get a good ending. So there's mm -hmm. no stress involved. Um, they <laughs> make you warm and fuzzy inside and they're really fun to make fun of. So, um, that was like kind of my mindset going into watching Holiday for the first time last year. And then I watched it, it was like, this is not a Hallmark movie. This is a quality movie. Um, that, uh, I don't know that it's like, you know, Christmas classic worthy, but definitely one that 
obviously I wanted to watch again, which is a huge tell. Like, you never want to watch the same Hallmark movie twice. Because <laughs> they're all the same movie anyways. They're, they are all the same. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this one was super fun. And, yeah, it also uh, takes place in Chicago, which is fun. So it was one I was like, I would enjoy watching that again. So, yeah. And Nick? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was proud. It was better than I thought. Yeah. Was, was this the first time you saw it? Was watching yes. it with Madison? Yes. And um, you know, to make sure I was prepared, I watched it a second time today. You watched it twice. Listen, I need to be prepared for things. As they <laughs> I love this. So, here's here, so here's um, the fault. Did you take notes on the second time? I didn't. You know, I probably should have, but I got a lot. You're not prepared up here. You're not prepared. Um, <laughs> I just got to say, if you like Madison's Instagram reviews, it, nothing beats in person. She has the best commentary about everything. Football <laughs> games, TV shows, <laughs> movies. It's the best. So, Nick, what was the amount of time in between the two watches of Holiday? Um, at, it was over 24 hours. At least. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you watched it twice in 24 hours? No, it was, we watched it Saturday night, and then, yeah, I watched it, like, yesterday and this morning. Yeah. Yesterday and this morning. No, um, it's actually like, three, no. I didn't watch it three times. <laughs> He's like, I just can't stop but watching no, yeah. it. I mean, this is now my new favorite go-to Cinco de Mayo and Fourth of July movie. Like, I'm going to be having a year. So I think that perfectly leads into the question we alluded to at the beginning uh, or before we went to break. Is this a Christmas movie, or is it not a you know a, a, a every holiday movie? What do you all think? It kind of could be. It it has the most Christmas vibes, but I think the Fourth of July scene is pretty fun too, and that's it could make a great Fourth of July movie because there there aren't enough of those out there. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I think there's even less Cinco de Mayo movies I know. out there. Uh, well, I put in my notes at one point the Fourth of July sequence because I kind of you think of it, it's like being divided up by each holiday, basically. Mm -hmm. That was when I knew I was like, "Yep, my opinion on this movie is set." <laughs> that it's not a Christmas movie. Uh, no, just sorry, that is a good question. Just in terms of how I felt generally about it, like oh. my like I I think I set my rating, mm -hmm. like as that scene was happening. Interesting. I'll be curious to hear about that. I think this is a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Because it begins and ends at Christmas. <gasps> I was going to say that same thing. I was going to be like, just like the year, it begins and ends at Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Which means that the year is is all Christmas. If the movie is Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Madison's like, I am allowed to celebrate Christmas literally 12 months out of the year because the year begins and ends with Christmas. <laughs> well, Madison, what date does Christmas begin for you? Um, today will be the 16th day of Christmas, so November. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't used to be this way. I'm like going back to my Facebook memories, you know, each year. And like, like on November 16th in 2011, I was like, people listen to the Christmas music. What are they think? <laughs> <laughs> but now I just am like, you know what? Once Halloween is over, I just begin celebrating because I enjoy it. And when do you start? I know the answers to all these, but I just want to put it out in the universe. When do you start creating your Christmas cards? Oh, I got mine mid-September. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not even finished yet. I still have to put stamps on them. Like, they will go out next week on Wednesday. They'll go in a blue mailbox, but they're not finished yet. Like, because I have almost 120 now. I almost expected it to come in. We got a card in the mail today, and I was like, oh, is this it? No, but it no, no. It. I mean, so after Thanksgiving, I'll get a lot of hate. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, for those listeners who don't know Madison or her her wacky Christmas cards, she, like, goes full out every year. Last year, was it was the reindeers in Zoom, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just to be clear, not just like, oh, how cute. I found pictures of all of the reindeer <laughs> and, and then made them look like they were in Zoom. No, 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 <laughs> listeners, dear listeners. Madison dressed herself up as the various reindeers in different uh, poses towards the Zoom cameras. Uh, and then that was the, the Christmas card. That is 
easily the most creative, most brilliant Christmas card I have ever received. So this year better be better. I, no pressure. Okay. <laughs> it's already done, so. <laughs> Those who are not watching this on YouTube, you couldn't see the just like genuine terror that went across Madison's face when Danny said that. Oh, Alright, should we talk about this movie? Yes, so please. So, we've concurred that it is a Christmas movie because Madison and I said so. Um, and because Madison has a deep, deep love for Christmas. I agree to disagree, but okay. And starting Thanks. November 1st, which we watched this after November 1st, Madison only watches Christmas movies. So, it's a, it's a Christmas movie. Wait, is that true? You and literally just so like, will... Okay. <laughs> I'm making a point here. Some people actually watch enough movies on a regular basis, Danny, that they don't have to limit it. It's not like they have one per week. Some people. No, anyway, sorry. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Da -da -da. Oh, I want to read to you all my first two notes. Oh, okay. First three notes. First note. Oh, that's a very Midwestern house before they established <laughs> it with Chicago. And then I said, wait, that's not Logan Square. <laughs> They claim to be in Logan Square. Yeah, we talked about this. No way. It's like a nice little um, bungalow. It's not really a bungalow. Maybe Cape Cod. I don't know. It's very like suburban Midwestern. Mm -hmm. I would definitely believe that to be. There's houses that look like that in our neighborhood. We don't live in the city. Correct. And that's what I'm getting at. We technically live in the city, but we don't live in the city. Then my next note is, I love Kristen Chenoweth. <laughs> <laughs> because. Because she is the best thing about this movie. Yes. And that's and that's not like a ding on the movie. Well, <laughs> I like the Australian boy too. Oh um, dear. I was honestly in the first couple of minutes, I was nervous because the beginning is rocky. It's it's a rough start. Mm -hmm. I yeah, that first I, I'm curious what you all's thoughts are on this. But I mean, I love the the premise of sort of the setup of how they each have their own respective versions of a terrible Christmas. But that guy, the 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 Aussie, as we'll apparently just call him, I can't remember the. Do you, either of you remember the character's name? Jackson. Yeah. Jackson. Ja ah, there we go, Jackson. Okay, so Jackson. Um, I I wrote down do it in my twin bed. Does anybody remember that a Saturday Night Live bit? I can sing the whole thing for you. Thank you. Um. So yeah, like clearly she like jumps him, and it's like awkward, and it's all of the like kitty things around, and so that's immediately all I thought of was do it in my twin bed. And then the next note that I have somewhere after that is like, oh no, she crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. But before, like, I think that when you're introduced to him and his Christmas, that's when I was on board. This PC is in battery safe mode. We should probably plug it in, huh? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably have to edit this part. I'm going to be right back. Okay, but before... Do, do you want to maybe put a pin in that so you're not like <laughs> talking while I'm leaving the room to... Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Prior to the Australian dude coming in, I think that's where it got good. I was very concerned for how much exposition was happening at the beginning of the movie. You are single for Christmas. You are dressed bad. Do you smoke again? Why mm -hmm. didn't you call Rodney? Sit at the kid. Like, the whole interaction with the family for the first five or so minutes, I was like, oh no. This is bad writing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, so I'm... I'm what did you all think? What was your reactions the first time you saw that scene? Um, I had the benefit of going back to my Instagram story archive <laughs> to actually watch my like live reaction to it. And honestly, I was not in a good place when I watched the year ago. <laughs> but like it, it, it was very like angsty at the beginning. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to be a movie that makes me feel good. Um, or it just makes me feel worse about holidays and being with family and like whatever single life. And so I was concerned too when I first watched it, but it doesn't stay that way. That's true. Agreed. And that actually, so your, your t comments on the writing of it and how it felt to me, it, it felt like a, uh, this is where it felt the most like a Hallmark movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and, and that is a, criticism of Hallmark movies in general. Like, they're they're not known necessarily for, like, good writing. Like Madison said, you, you watch them because you know what you're getting. It's going to be the same general idea. It's going to have definitely a happy ending. But, and this will get us into maybe the rest of the movie, too. This is, I think this movie, the brilliance of it is it has all the things that are good about Hallmark movies. 
but then it does something different. To me, I at one point wrote a note, this movie is if the movie Bridesmaids had a baby with a Hallmark movie. You would get this movie. <laughs> okay. Holiday is that. Uh, that's a good analogy. Nick, what was your, your thoughts on the first, I would say, like 10 minutes of the movie? Yeah, I thought it was a little too slow. And um, Emma Roberts was a little annoying. Oh, I agree with you. No, but she was... She was so down, and yeah, I don't know. It was a little too, a little hitting it a little too hard about how just upset she was with the dating life. But you know, I guess not all of us have been there. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so sweet! And somehow he still just managed to turn that right into a compliment for a significant other. That is skillful, my friend. Well done. Um. Yeah, the, when she's interacting with her family, and then when they cut to Australian Boy, I thought it was entertaining, and then I had the thought, Madison likes this movie? Because, okay, <laughs> this is going to be a... I'm just quoting the movie, Aunt Peggy, and whoever else is watching. She, when he's, like, being jumped by this girl, and he's like, girls go crazy during the holidays, and then she's like, I want you come in my mouth, and this is how you treat me. And I was shocked that, first of all, she said that. I literally said out loud, oh. And then I was like, Madison, this is not, this is too not wholesome for you. I said on, okay, you will see on my Instagram stories that when I did it, I said, this is not a movie for children. <laughs> yeah, it's, that is true. it's a lot more explicit than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, there was one scene that I was like, I wrote down, I can't believe they just dropped as many F-bombs as they did literally in this one scene. I think what was, uh, it was, it was, that was the moment with what 4th of July. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, they say like five times in a minute. Well, granted, they're just trying to get the one girl to drop one, so. But still, like, that means that, like, they went just like, we're yeah. going to just say F. F, F, fug, fug, fug. And then her screaming it. Yes. <laughs> when she finally gets her to say it. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> but, I mean, Kristen Chenoweth is also just a dirty gal, and some of her lines are hilarious. I love her character. She brings a lot of levity, and she's that one lady who's always got a new, a new Santa with her. Mm -hmm. um, she is. She is, for all intents and purposes, the heart of the movie, because without her, there'd be no holidays. Absolutely. Because she's the inspiration for the holidays. That reminds me of another note I had. She is the originator. And then I thought it was funny how, like, from that moment on, she shares this idea. And then Emma Roberts has to ask, holiday, what's that? And she explains what it is. And then we have this series over the next 20 minutes of, like, everybody explaining to another person what a holiday is. And then they immediately go off. And start using it like it's just no, like even though they had to be told what the hell a holiday is, they then immediately turn around and use it in front of their friends as if it's just some term that we've all been <laughs> using for years. <laughs> That's just how it works. Um, <laughs> I wrote very self-referential. I can't remember. I think that must be when um, the they're sitting at in New Year's Eve, and they're like. It's so dumb. You know that people always end up together. Everyone can see it but them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they like kind of look the camera almost. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And okay, this is something that I've already ranted to Nick about. But um, Jackson, he's there talking about like, oh, Ryan Gosling, blah, blah, blah. But listen, as if he's not more attractive than Ryan Gosling, or like at least on par. No one is more attractive than Ryan Gosling. I disagree. This Australian man is more attractive we, we than Ryan Gosling. We have had this conversation before, probably even on mic. No one is more attractive than Ryan Gosling. Anyway, continue. <laughs> um, uh, but That was my point. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I wrote the same note that you just said. I just wrote, she's so mean, to be honest. I don't <laughs> like her attitude. She's a cranky gal. Yeah, she is a pretty unlikable up, character. Up, yeah. yeah. He really softens her up. we got to thank Jackson for the way the movie turned out. Thanks, Jackson. <laughs> Yes, it's always the man who makes things better. <laughs> okay, and <good> on. <laughs> wait, Madison, where'd you hello, come back? Oh no, they oh they left us. I, they they took me seriously. Oh dear. Um, so yeah, essentially we get into they meet in a, in a return line at a mall because they're both being mean to each. She's being mean to him. He just wants money for his pants. Mm -hmm. His 
He's just gotten he's away from a traumatic experience. And... and did anyone else hear the word car key every time he said khaki? He's like, but they're car keys. Car keys. Which they bring up later. Here's another sticking point. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, okay. It's just me getting on my high horse now. Now I'm on a soapbox. Nick knows what's coming. So she's talking about, oh, he can't even speak English. She can't even say the word khaki. As if that should be a deal. Like, sometimes English is not people's first language. Right. Also, he English is his first language. <laughs> That's what I'm saying! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah. Anyway. Uh, that is That brings up a criticism that I had, I feel like, a little bit. There's a lot of times where people sort of to me, that's sort of a dated sense. Like, the reason, this is why it made me think of it. It's like thinking about, oh, we're going to make fun of someone for the way they say something is kind of dated. And I feel like there was a lot of dated moments where they're like, girls do this, mm-hmm. and guys always have to behave this way. Girls be crazy around the holidays. Like, that's <laughs> yes. literally what they say. Or, again, another s- s- sticking point for me that maybe is I'm br- blowing this out of proportion. But, like, the only main, or maybe the only black character in the whole movie being obsessed with Black Panther? Mm, yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> I thought yeah. about that, too. Yeah. The one caveat that I did write down at one point that I thought maybe redeems this, because I think all of this is very valid and still not great. I think they sort of know what they're trying to do. The fact that it is vulgar, and I mentioned it being Bridesmaid has a baby with a Hallmark movie, I think they're sort of simultaneously trying to be a Hallmark movie while doing a bit of a send-up mm-hmm. for a Hallmark movie. Like, they they are doing the sort of obvious tropes like that because that is an obvious trope that occurs in Hallmark movies, and they're sort of, at the same time, winking to camera, like you said, Danielle, and saying, like, we know we're doing this, and we're pointing out how ridiculous it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think Netflix does a good job of that, generally mm-hmm. speaking, on, on their holiday movies. Yeah, I concur. So, what basically happens is they meet because they share a two-for-one pretzel, and they're like, okay, we'll be together for for New Year's (laughs) Eve. And then he has these fancy-ass tickets to some club in Chicago somewhere, and then they dance, and then she probably would have broken her collarbone, but she's fine um, at the end of the day. And then she's like, I'll never see you again. Even though... He's the holiday. I, why is she mad about having a plan to see him in February when she's the holiday? He's the holiday. Yeah, it's like, you know, there's there's kind of, ideally, there would be no stress here, right? I mean, I think it's, but I think that it's the idea of the setup of, well, you know, you got to dislike the guy at the beginning, or also, like, she clearly already does like him, but she's, like, trying to push him away because that's yeah. what she does. Because she's got a broken heart. So, so you know. <laughs> So, this this is another thing. It. Like who? How? What? Oh, <laughs> what Madison do doesn't even know what to say. Do, what do his? What? What? What does she do? Like she has a a one bedroom apartment that's big enough to fit a, a bed that's bigger than twin size. How? What does she do for a living? We see well, I know she works from home. home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's a golf pro though. <laughs> That's true. That you I make, can understand that. You make lots of money. Um, okay, so New Year's, that was fine. Cute, cute little New Year's. She switched dresses. Honestly, that made me tear up that she was very kind to the girl who was going to get engaged to. I know. It's like Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants because they were both the exact same size. <laughs> Except that other girl was three feet shorter than Emma <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> um, and then they see each other again right before Valentine's Day when she's like, no. But then she runs into... Luke. Oh, yeah. Riddle me this, Batman. Why in the world is he at the mall so much? Who lives in the <laughs> and goes to the mall so much? Also, there's more than one mall in Chicago. And, and they, none of them are they close artic- to Logan Square. I was going to say, and they articulate, she lives in Logan Square and he lives in Evanston. And they went to the same mall? BS. <laughs> That's not real. Um, I did think that was a cute little scene, though. He saves her. And then he says to that that girl that Luke is dating, bye, Felicia. <laughs> that was yeah. fun. So and she's like, my name's Fernanda or Felicity. whatever. Felicity. Felicity. Right? Fernanda's better, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madison. Also, my... Sorry. <laughs> my note on that scene. Okay. Just before we move on, I want to make sure we're... Are we moving on yet? Go ahead. Okay. 
so my note on that scene because this goes to show how much of a like movie nerd i am they did an excellent job of when she gets sort of trapped by luke luke is clearly much taller than her and so they make a choice in terms of the the director of photography to film her like from luke's perspective Mm. which also has the effect of making her look very small like almost childlike like she is trying to just like wrinkle up and be like i am not here please don't make this happen to me and then when uh our i forget jackson, jackson. i was gonna say i always forget this guy's name it's generic <laughs> white guy so when generic white guy comes in and stands next to her and is there saving her they pan out and now because to fit him in frame now she like still looks normal size and it's not looking down yeah. anymore it is now looking straight ahead and mm. all of a sudden that's because she no longer is you know feeling like such a small person i thought that was an excellent excellent use in you know an otherwise not necessarily technically impressive movie yeah. mm -hmm. um the thing i was gonna say is the boyfriend's name is luke and the actor who plays jackson's real name is luke do we think that's on purpose <laughs> No. Oh, okay. Nope. <laughs> he, there's a line where he's like, Luke, oh, that's a name. And that, then later, I was like, that's literally his name. I mean, that choice may have been. That like, that writing been. choice. But, yeah, I think it's Luke because he's French. And it's not, like, Luke, like, L-U-K-E. It's Luke. 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 Like, L-U-C. Like, not not N-I-C. <laughs> Call back. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I did write my next note is some of these jokes crack me up. There's a lot of unexpected lines in this movie that I think are really, really funny. Yeah, you don't see them coming, and then you're just like, the next thing you know, you're laughing out loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so then Valentine's Day, they spend together eating chocolate in a car. They have um, a gratuitous fake hand job scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where instead she's just feeding him chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny. And then, then we go to Easter. Here's my surprise. My note on Easter. Who eats outside on Easter in <laughs> Chicago? I know all the outfits were not accurate to what the time <laughs> is like. Okay, no. yeah, no. no. And who does anyone celebrate Easter the way that they do? Like these people, <sighs> how rich are they though? Like they, the tables <laughs> and the bunny and the and the big yard and the and the dresses. In the giant playhouse that's yeah. in the backyard. Yeah. And I was like, that's supposed to be Logan Square? <laughs> that yard doesn't exist in Logan Square. <laughs> My boss Let alone how much it owns a house in Logan Square. It's a very nice house. Her backyard is four feet. <laughs> Total. <laughs> like Maybe so her mom is the president of Logan Square. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> the president of Logan Square. Um, great. Then we go to Cinco de Mayo, which is hysterical. That scene caught, and I was like, who celebrates Cinco de Mayo like this? <laughs> I feel like that is that is something you have to... Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, they got big plans for everything somehow. Like, these people know how to live. Oh, yeah. We also skipped St. Patrick's Day. <gasps> Shoot. Yeah. Sorry. Go back to it, Madison. I was yeah, just was saying, weird. yeah, I was like, this is the only reason they picked Chicago. Because they yes. were like, where else goes big for... St. Patrick's Day. We have to find a place that goes big for every holiday. And then Chicago was it. And then they showed the Green River and they were like, we've done our duty. And uh, and like, yeah, the holiday, th like, here's the thing. Who, and Cinco de Mayo. It's like, who's going to know if you don't have a date? <laughs> right? No, nobody's tracking whether you bring a date to these things. No, and you're making each other miserable, so why? <laughs> and people, you don't want, if you're single in Chicago, St. Patrick's Day and Cinco de Mayo are great holidays to be single. I was going to say, <laughs> that's hookup time right there. <laughs> Those bar crawls, you know? Everybody drinks, and then their inhibitions are down, and then what happens in the movie happens with a random stranger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, question. Do you oh. all think that they had sex on Cinco de Mayo? I, I think no. I don't think so either, but... They do have, uh, I don't know if this is, they do have, uh, Nick pointed out the photo strip in the, in the uh, what is it, photo booth, uh, yep. kissing each other. Yep. Which mm -hmm. obviously don't remember because later in the movie, they touch hands and that's like some huge deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true, but she. That is what makes me think that they did hook up. 
Yeah. She switched underwear though, which that's, is that's yeah. That like, is true. They were making out before the scene that we <laughs> then later see her theoretically in timeline like have to be in someone else's underwear. Like yeah, that's I'm sorry, something happened. <laughs> yeah. You you don't get when you're drunk and you just like go drunk pass out. You don't swap underwear. <laughs> or you do, so you think true. It's funny. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other holidays that stood out for anyone? Yeah, we haven't even gone through all of them yet. <sighs> okay. Uh, well, we forgot to introduce Farouk. Oh, Farouk, he's a, he. I was like, oh, he's a great choice for somebody who is like not the character that is Emma Robert. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you ended up being correct. Or he's too safe for her. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting because it seemed like he liked her a lot and. The mom was obviously pushing it. And they even went to the wedding together. And I was like, oh, well, they like each other. Obviously, he's into her. And then, nope, they like just got rid of that plot point where he was just like, I'm not into you anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think they use that, to, again, like the, the knowing trope, where that would be the type of person where a lot of times that would end up. Or he's the foil, but he ends up like having to somehow, uh, you know, fight our main guy for her love or something like that and instead i like that they flip that on his head and it's like no he actually has a stronger connection with the slutty aunt mm -hmm. <laughs> yes <laughs> and then i wrote this note probably multiple times her mom is just so obsessed with marriage mm -hmm. like the yeah. little brother is married the older brother is yeah i mean elder sister is maybe unhappily married mm -hmm. in a weird marriage with four children um and she never sees her husband and then she and then the younger brother's like we don't even know each other so why does the mom want the other child to get married <laughs> plus they don't even address her father who could that be that's her point actually i'm stealing no no, like, no who yeah who knows if they had a horrible marriage that then why is she also forcing that yeah uh, this makes zero sense <laughs> um so then we get to fourth of july nick Ooh. or nick either one I'll let Nick go first. I know you all are very excited about 4th of July. So there's a big holiday in this movie. It is. So many laughs in this part. What is it about 4th of July that you think is maybe the turning point or what made you love it? Mm, I think just the overall hijinks. You see his injury coming a mile away. Yeah. Shooting bombs. You gotta hold on to it for as long as you can. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And then the driving scene really cracked me up when she's trying to drive that van. Um, let's see. Oh, and trying to get Liz to drop the They're pretty hilarious. Too. Yeah. Um, it's very funny that they have a lake house because this is a very, like, suburban Chicago mm -hmm. thing to have. But then I, when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, that's legit. We owned a lake house growing up. Everyone I knew owned a lake house. But then they drive to the hospital, and who's the doctor there? Farouk! <laughs> does he work in Michigan, where everyone has a lake house, or does he work in Logan Square? I don't know. It's just like the mall. There's literally only one hospital that everyone goes to for like you know, just like a hundred or two hundred mile radius. Goodness. Why do you love the 4th of July scene? Or why did it change your opinion of the movie? So I, I wrote down, like, I decided right then and there, I overall like this movie. And and we'll get into ratings later. But that's, like, my general sentiment was like, yep, this, this did it for me. Because I feel like that's when I realized this movie definitely knows what it is. Knows that it is trying to be the vulgar version of a Hallmark movie. And the way you really confirm that is all the fuck conversations. We're dropping the F-bombs left and right. Uh, the driving that was happening, and then... <laughs> the violence? He blew his whole finger off! Well, and with that, I was gonna say, I actually, I love the sequence where they just keep making puns about fingers. Yes! <laughs> yes. Like, I know you from somewhere, I just can't quite put my finger on it, they say to some nurse, it's just like, and it just keeps going. And then Farouk comes in, and as he leaves, he, I can't remember what it was, but he tries to give some finger pun too, and the two of them just like, deadpan, don't laugh at all. They've been giggling at every other pun that they've made. <laughs> It was perfect. It was perfect. And then obviously this is the first time they kind of show that they both like each other. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or at least mm -hmm. they cared for each other. Yes, but there was a spark because yeah, yeah. hands touched. 
Um, <laughs> great. So then, I don't think there's it's... literally electricity every time we touch. Don't touch me. <laughs> 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 so then, after that, it just gets it goes to the wedding, right? On I... Labor Day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The wedding on Labor Day. Yep. And this is where this is what you would call the third act, right? Sure. Yeah, I think so. Okay. The second act was blowing off the finger, and it's the climax, and then this is the third act where the the problem arises. Got it. Um, thoughts on the wedding, you all? Um, chewing on the fingers was pretty hilarious. <laughs> so, nope, no, no, <laughs> I can't feel anything. It's fine. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, this was okay. So uh, this was something a scene for me that I was just like. I understand what's happening, but it felt like a filler scene, kind of. I mean, just to, like, solidify, obviously, like, okay, we actually do like each other, but we're going to be playing games with each other to kind of prove it to ourselves. Um, it was a scene where, yeah, Kristen Chenoweth found her true love, although we did not know it yet. <laughs> um, and, I was, like, I remember the first time I was watching it, I was like, oh, she's going to end up, I mean, Emma's going to end up with this, or Sloan's going to end up with Farouk, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden they have like the plot twist of that's not really what's happening, but Farouk does get some love. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I liked that aspect, but it wasn't really a holiday as much as it was just like, a, actually, maybe let's address them going to a wedding. Yeah, and some random places, because also the father got Oh yeah, I wrote that down too. Oh my a god, a sexual yes. father-daughter yes. dance is. Um, <laughs> I think what I did it. I caught it in the subtitles the second time I watched it that they were dancing to like "I Want to Make Love to You" or something. Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it was brutal. Hilarious. Yeah, that I mean that's why this movie is really funny. It's got moments like that where you would yes. not expect it. Yeah, I agree with you, Maz. Da da da. I still want to know what happens with her sister, who is like apparently angry at her husband for taking care of their children. <laughs> well, if you watch the post credit or the credits, they go on um, a vacation together. Mm -hmm. I still think that she. W why was I supposed to be on her side? I was ready for her to get chewed out. Yeah. Because she's like, you're never anywhere, and he's like, oh, I'm with the kids, and then she still <laughs> complains about that. But then Wally goes and has a heart attack. It, yeah. Wally. Yeah. Wally is the true villain. Saved of this by film. the guy dying. <laughs> um. All right. So should I just go first then? Yeah. Okay. I'll give my heart rating. So, uh, just so you all know, this is the portion of the podcast where we give our zero to five heart ratings. I tend to try to make that a more objective measure of how quality I think the film is. Just prefacing it for when people get mad at me. Uh, and then also a would you renew your vows to this film? So in other words, you know, like, did it hold up to, you know, how you remember it? Or w would you watch it again if it's your first time watching it like it is for most of us? So I would say, and I keep going back and forth between 3.25 and 3.5. And it's ironic. I was just having this conversation about, like, that's the difference between making it a fresh or a not fresh if we were like an actual Rotten Tomatoes critic. Mm. And I think that's why I'm on the fence is mm. to me, it's right there on the fence. Mm hmm. But I think I'm going to let it be fresh. So we're going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, it's a solid film. It deserves the B minus. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like rock star necessarily. It knows what it is. And it does that well. What it is is maybe not the best piece of filmmaking. But there's, there's pieces there that are good. I would definitely renew my vows. This to me is the kind of movie that is, yeah, maybe it's not, you know, absolutely, you know, Oscar worthy or anything like that, but it is a great movie to put on and I can totally see myself watching again or having it be more or less added to our uh, holiday rotation because apparently it is a holiday movie and that's the only time of year that I'm going to get to watch it. It's a Christmas movie. You can't say holiday movie because all the holidays are in it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give it a 4.75 out of 5. Ooh, wow, coming in hot. I, I did not see that coming. Me, cut, me neither, just like this movie. <laughs> I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I really, truly enjoyed it, and I thought it was stupid and heartwarming, and it had jokes that made me giggle that were like new, unexpected jokes. So comedy is important to me, so I liked it. I don't like Emma Roberts, but like everything else I liked. So she's the reason it's not a 5. 
And then oh, I actually thought she did quite well. I did, and I was I thought she was very attractive. And anyway, sorry. Wow. Well, <laughs> we're giving ratings based on people's appearance. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would definitely renew my vows. I feel like I'm probably gonna watch this at least one more time this season. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, All right. It's good. I liked it. Well, Nick can speak to how that feels watching it more than once per season. So, Nick, what is uh, your rating? I'll give it a three seven five. Uh, mm -hmm. I also really liked it, and um, yeah, because it was funny, but still had a good ending. That wasn't like it wasn't too cheesy. It was funny how they pulled off. So, um, and yeah, I'd still renew the thousand. Wait, why? But maybe why? not this year, but... I was going to say, you're going to watch it a third time yeah, this season? Yeah, not three times in a season, but I think it's going to be <laughs> in my Christmas rotation. Can you? Can I ask a clarifying question? If you thought it was funny and enjoyable, why a 3.75? Um, That's a respectable grade. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I guess because I, I, like, laugh chuckles a little, but, like, I didn't, like, die laughing. And the maybe at the beginning that that's what it was. You know, they gotta somebody's gotta rewrite. We need like a director's cut release. That we could we could get to the point us, quicker at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. That gets us there. Mm -hmm. Fair. Okay. All right, that's fair. Madison. Okay, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but I have high standards. Ooh. <laughs> um Ooh. Because, listen, here's the thing. Here's how I think about it. A one is like, um you ever watch that YouTube video of the, the Christmas shoes. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Okay, like that super I, sad um, thing. Yeah. It's, sad. it's so bad. Oh, the, I, now I'm just hating on somebody's creative project. But <laughs> <laughs> the quality, oh, it's terrible. It's like they play the song, Sir, I want to buy these shoes. Yeah, but like that. the characters in it mouth it while it's singing. So they're like, <laughs> For that? listeners, uh, yeah. <laughs> Madison I is just mouthing during that portion of things. <laughs> Madison, did you see that at church? I, they probably showed that at church for me. <laughs> I no, my friends showed it to me. They were like, "Look at this." <laughs> <laughs> so that's a one. Okay, so yeah. that's a one. And a five is like your white Christmases. You're like, it's a wonderful life. Home alone. Mm. This for me is a three point five. So it's still fresh. But it's, and it, I would, I would renew my vows like I have, but it's not one of those things that I, I would watch it every year, but I wouldn't watch it like, it's not a December movie for me. It's a November Christmas movie. And it's oh, like, there's, yeah. I didn't realize, there's an, there's a hierarchy in terms of I November I versus December. Best, I save the best for December, like when I really oh. want to ramp things up. And so I'm just like, you know, it gives me the world warm fuzzies a little bit, but not enough for me to be like, it's Christmas tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so I enjoy it as a movie. Just it's just you know, it's it's not home alone yet. <laughs> it's more of a rom com yeah. than a yeah. Christmas movie. Though it still is a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, though, and knowing uh, having our listeners now hear a little bit more about your process, Madison, uh, since we're heading right into the holiday season and you have clearly already begun by the time that uh, they will hear this. Uh, where can uh, listeners find you to see your reviews of these movies? What is your Instagram or other handles? Yeah, I mainly do this through Instagram. My handle is at Mad Marley, M A D M A R L I E. Um, that's the same on Twitter, also. And I also have TikTok, but I'm not very <laughs> active on there. Yeah, My, you wrote songs and stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the algorithm. Oh, well, that's, I'm sorry, your face right there. The algorithm honors quantity over quality, so I don't have very much quantity on there. But if you do want to see what I have, I'm at Pretty and Think. <laughs> Pretty and Think. I like that. And Nick, do you have anything that you would like to plug? <laughs> oh, he's a, he's an Instagrammer. No, oh. I'm not an active social media person, unfortunately. No upcoming <laughs> projects that people could, you know watch listen to uh, maybe just on. a guest appearance or two on madison's instagram if she'll have oh. me back i have you can see my first appearance we watched love hard got pretty rave reviews 
<laughs> I actually really want to watch that movie after watching your reviews of that movie. But it was really good. good. I don't watch all your rev reviews of movies I haven't seen because I'm like, oh, what if I just, I want to watch it and see it for myself. But mm -hmm. I kind of scroll through and I'm like, oh, okay, she liked it. Oh, this looks funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. And Danny, do you have anything to plug? Oh, yeah. Get listen, listen, friends. Uh, I, I'm also going to plug Madison, too, because she wasn't plugging herself. You can see Madison in Tragic School Bus, right? Do you have any yeah. shows coming up? Tragic School Bus Comedy. We are going to have a show at the Bug House on December 4th. Uh, I think at 7.30. It's just uh, an improv show. We're just jamming with some other teams. Um, but, yeah, and I am virtual rec league at Comedy Sports this Wednesday on Twitch at 7 p.m. Sweet. And then I'm after Madison, <laughs> so I'm 8 p.m. for Comedy Sports Minor League. And sometimes I'm live, sometimes I'm on Twitch. I DK. And actually this Thursday, oh, this is coming out afterwards. I'm going to be on a movie trivia show, Person, Place, Thing. Imagine where you're on do that they one. record them? They do record them. So you can watch me compete uh, uh, in a movie trivia show, which I'm not good at movie trivia, on Thursday. So for all the new listeners, uh, thank you very much. We, we very are ha much happy to have you. For everyone returning, if you have any more interest in those things, definitely make sure you go find uh, Danny because... The new listeners, some of you may have found us because you, we were recently appearing on Settle the Score, and so you saw some of Danny's movie knowledge. And so if you want to see some more of Danny's movie knowledge, definitely go look up Comedy Sports Chicago on Twitch. Yeah. Nick, do you have anything you want to plug? Sorry. Nick, do you have anything you want to plug? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. You, it, there's, I, we occasionally do movie reviews on TikTok, uh, In Love With Movies. Otherwise, just the rest of our socials and everything like that. Uh, you know, you can follow us at In Love With Movies. Uh, that's the letter N, Love With Movies, on tick, uh, or on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can search for In Love, comma, With Movies on Facebook. Uh, or, you know, sometimes I post about all things IO Psychology and movies, because those are my two passions. So if you want to do that, you can find me at Nick Loves Movies. That's N-I-C-L-U-V. So Nick Loves Movies. Nick Loves Movies. <laughs> All right. And with that, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We really appreciate having you. Thank you, Madison and Nick. Thank Madison you for and having us. Oh, my gosh. They already have group mind going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, I love you, Danny. I love you, Nick. And we, we love you, Madison and Nick. Oh, you're supposed to say it at the same time, I did. She said it way too fast. I couldn't keep up. <laughs> and we love you, uh, listeners. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh, Follow us on Twitter at the letter N, love with movies, on Facebook at facebook.com slash with movies and love, and on Instagram and TikTok at in love underscore with movies. You can email us at with movies in love. That's all one word with movies in love at gmail.com to share your own love stories with us, suggest future love topics that you might want to hear us discuss, or just to say, hey, we'd like to hear from you. Hey. All original music written and performed by Danny Smith with our theme song remixed by Paul Brandt. And this whole podcast was produced and edited by my lovely husband, Nicholas Baldwin. Special thank you to Ben A. Bear for Danny's Dingle and Nick Stretchberry for our website and podcast art. We did it! Hey! We did it! Sorry, that was a long thing. I Thanks, that's a little long. We don't normally, uh, like I said, that's the first time we've had it here, so normally it's something I drop in later. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thanks for sticking with us. Thank you guys both very much, sincerely. This was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, it was super fun. Yeah, now we have to hang out in real life. Yes.